Hey, this is Mike from the future with a quick addendum to this video. What you're seeing on screen right now is the correct way to build the tower that drops the dice in the game. It's how any sane person would have put it together, but I somehow, like a moron, for my playthrough had both of the tower levels flipped so that uh, the dice were like going in these little tiny holes. So I just wanted to clarify that before you watch the playthrough so that people watching this in the future don't put their tower together the wrong way as well. And also, I can't say for sure, but this was one of the luckiest games I've played. I definitely won easier than I usually do. And who knows, maybe building my tower in this incorrect way had some part in that sending the dice to the same quadrant to make it easier for me. Uh, hard to say, but in any case, hope you enjoy the video. Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I've got another Kickstarter preview for you. This one is The Spill, coming from Smirk and Dagger Games. And it should either be on Kickstarter or coming soon by the time this video airs. Check the video description for a link to the Kickstarter page. The Spill is a solo and cooperative game for up to four players where you're trying to work together to rescue marine life and remove oil after a terrible oil spill. And I'm going to do my regular thing, do a full playthrough, and then at the end, give my thoughts and impressions on the game. So use the timestamps if you want to skip to that after you've watched some. And a reminder that we never accept any compensation for our Kickstarter coverage. We're just here to help you make an informed choice about your games. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, please consider supporting us through Patreon. Check out our Discord for some great conversations. Listen to our weekly podcast or watch our other streaming videos on our separate streaming channel. So to go over the basics of the game, in the spill, one to four players will control collectively four specialists. So in four player, you'll each control one. In solo, like I'm doing, I'm controlling all four of them. And this big board here represents the spill. In the middle, we've got this kind of oil derrick tower that's going to be dropping dice. Now, of course, everything you see here is an early prototype, but you're going to be dropping dice in here. Black dice like you see around the exterior here. That represents the oil, and it's going to fall into these four sectors. And then within each sector, you have spaces one through six. So the value of the die will determine the exact track that it goes on to. And if the oil dice reach a marine animal, it's going to contaminate them. And they're in danger of going to your sick bay if you don't rescue them quickly enough. Each player's got a little ship figure that's going to be moving around the exterior in these black spaces. And your main actions are going to be to get rid of the black dice, get rid of the oil, and also to rescue animals that are in your space. And a lot of the elements of the game are controlled by the secondary board. So each round of the game begins with a spill phase. You're going to look where this little oil token is currently located based on your difficulty level. So you've got standard, challenge, and ultimate. I'm trying out to challenge this time. We'll see if I win. And as those spaces on the board fill with oil, this will be moving to the right. And eventually, like for here on the challenge difficulty in the middle, we'll reach this spot where we start to dropping four dice every turn instead of three, which is what we start with. So this is the number of dice we'll drop into that tower and we'll uh, seed oil out on the board. Now, additionally, this board is where you'll put your rescued marine life and you'll see a little orange cube to the left of each of these rows. Whenever you get a full set of six animals, one of each type, you get a little orange resource cube. We'll get to what that does in a second. And the same thing with removing oil. You can either push oil back for one action, which just means it goes back in the bag and will fall again later, or you can remove it entirely coming over here. And whenever you get a full column, a set of three, you also get one of these little orange resource cubes. And those go along with these resource cards that we have chosen. You get to see two cards at a time and pick one. And they're going to let us get bonuses with resource cubes. So as we rescue sets of animals and remove sets of oil, we'll get to put the cubes on these cards and we can spend the cubes to perform their special actions. So as I mentioned, we have the spill phase first where you drop some dice, seed out some oil on the board. Then you're going to take your action phase. Each specialist has four action points to spend. For one action, you can move up to two spaces in either direction. For one action, you can also rescue a healthy animal in your space. So here, the seahorse or the pelican. Now, if an animal has been contaminated by oil, it instead costs two action points to rescue them instead of one. And your final two actions are for one action point, you can push oil back. Like I said, it goes back in the bag. Or for three, you can remove it entirely, which remembers how you're going to get those sets of three for resource cubes. And how do you win the game? Well, you have to fulfill three winning conditions. First of all, you have to have saved at least three contaminated marine animals, so they have to have oil on them. Second, you have to have removed 12 dice total from the game onto this little set of columns. 
And finally, you need at least two full sets of marine animals. The moment the players have completed all three of those, they win. Now, there are three ways to lose, and you only check these at the end of the turn. First of all, you have this sick bay where animals will go if they get contaminated and you don't rescue them. Basically, if at the end of the turn, they still have oil on them. And in that case, they go to the matching sick bay spot. And if you either get all three of a given animal type filled up or one of each type, because there's another sick bay with the other three animal types on the other side of the board, then you lose at the end of the round. The other way to lose, I'd mentioned before spill outs, which is when you have three dice on a given space. That, again, is going to increase how much oil oil comes out by moving that little token to the right. But additionally, at the end of any round, if you have six spillouts or more active on the board, so six areas that are full of dice, then you also lose. And by the way, if more dice would be placed in a spot with a spillout, they just go clockwise to the next space available. Now, there are a couple other things you'll see in play. First of all, there are weather dice that are in the bag with the oil dice. When you get those, you roll them and you'll have generally negative effects, although a six is actually helpful to you. That will last for each player's next turn. And secondly, even though each player can take four actions a turn, you can choose to take five or even six using this extra action pool. What happens is you draw extra oil dice from the bag and put them here. Basically, by your character choosing to do extra actions, you're also forcing the next player to drop more oil on the next spill phase. All right, so with the basics out of the way, let's see if we can save the day and play the spill. So I have all my specialists laid out and I'm going to play them in this order. So yellow, purple, green, red. Yellow is the hazmat specialist. She can remove oil for two action points instead of three. So she should certainly be doing that as often as possible. The marine vet can rescue an animal for free every turn or pay less to rescue a contaminated animal. The environmental tech can push back an oil for free and the risk engineer drops less oil and can also control which way it goes if it overflows. And I've already dropped eight dice to start the game. So you skip the first spill phase and we'll go right into the hazmat specialist turn. And she's over here, yellow. Remember, she pays less to remove oil permanently. And we've got two spots near her where the oil is about to potentially contaminate some animals. So let's have her go one for her first action, two, three. She should be removing as much as possible since it's cheaper for her. And then let's see, for her fourth action, she could come over here and then she could do an extra action, adding oil to our drop to maybe like save the octopus. But instead, I think for her last action, she'll just rescue this dolphin and hope that we don't roll that exact same area again. So nice job, Hazmat Specialist, already working on our victory conditions. We've got one out of 12 oil removed, one animal in our first row out of two sets that we need to win. Let's keep that train rolling. All right, now we go to the Marine Vets turn. We draw three dice from the bag, no weather dice this time. We just drop them in and see where they go. Okay, nice little mix there, a six, five, six. Oof, and the six and the five are not great. But the six up here, not really a problem and near the green guy. All right, and the Marine Vet is up. He's the one who gets to rescue an animal for free once per turn. So I could have him rescue the dolphin, but we already have one, so that might not be so good. You generally want to rescue the animals that are closer to the inside, of course. Maybe instead I should go down here and save this dolphin. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's have him go one, a free rescue of the stingray. So three actions left, and I want to get that oil out of there. So let's rescue the seahorse too for a second action. Move here and push one of these back into the bag. So that's three, four. Okay, now it's green, the environmental tech's turn. Let's see where things go. That is a lot in that area. That six is a problem. Three, four, maybe my floor is tilted. We'll see if we keep on going to the right more than the left. And kind of luckily, green is the next one up. She's the one who can push an oil back, the basic one that sends it back to a bag once per turn for free. So yikes, yikes, yikes. I guess we'll push back. That's free. Uh, one action and then two, three, four. I think she's going to actually remove one. We want to keep working on that goal. It's one of the toughest ones to do. Getting 12 oil off the board is expensive, but hopefully we protected the animals over here for now. And finally, we get to the risk engineer red and he only drops two dice. Oh, and that sorry, you can't see it. That's a two over there and a five down here. And that five's not great because this turtle is contaminated. Thankfully, Red is right there, so he'll be able to swoop in and save him. But still, that was a rough roll. Meanwhile, up here, the two, not much of a problem. So a quick note about contaminated animals. As I said, they cost two actions to save instead of one. If they are on a space with oil at the end of the turn, then they go to the sickbay automatically. And additionally, if they're contaminated and a new die would land on them, they immediately go to sickbay. So really, you want to rescue them if you can instead of leaving them there. And remember, we need to save three contaminated animals to win the game. That's our third victory condition. We've also got oil here. I could go one to push that back, two, three, four, and get rid of both of those, but not save him. 
because I really don't want a third die here to increase my spill out value. Um, yeah, that should leave him pretty safe. One, two, three, four. Unless two dice come here, he won't go anywhere. We can save him later, hopefully. And we're back to yellow, our hazmat specialist. Three dice, still no weather ones. Okay. Ah, crud, crud, crud. We got a contaminated octopus. And these animals are in danger. Thankfully, red got rid of the die that was there a second ago. And another pair of animals in danger. Dang, I'm getting all the ones that are uh, doubled up with animals to start. All right, so let's have yellow do something a little bit tricky. For first action, going to come over here. Second and third action, going to remove entirely that die, which completes our first column. will get us a resource cube. And let's look at our resources real quick. So the oil skimmer for one cube, you can redrop all the dice that fell into one of the four quadrants. Or if you use two cubes, you can just place them wherever you want. So you can make sure the oil is in the least nasty place possible. Multitask, super good. I just get two more action points. Yes, please. Vet defibrillator for one cube. I can take an animal in sickbay and put it back on the board. Healthy again, which is pretty amazing because remember that's one of your main loss conditions. Or for two cubes, you can just straight up rescue that animal. And finally, another nice one, stem the flow. For one cube, I can move the spill out token back to where I'm hopefully rolling fewer oil dice. Or for two cubes, I can go all the way back to where it changes color. So like, for example, if it was here in the yellow zone for my middle difficulty, I could move it all the way back to there. Pretty great. But for now, my plan is to have the hazmat specialist put it here and immediately use it to get two more action points. So remember, she had spent three so far. Now she has three more. She's going to go ahead and remove another oil die for two more. That leaves her with one. So she can't rescue the contaminated octopus yet. So let's get the sea turtle instead. We are close to our first set with that, just missing a pelican and an octopus. All right. That is an octopus, right? Not a squid. I always forget which one has the pointier head. <laughs> Y'all can make fun of me in the video comments if I got it wrong. Next is the purple marine vet who rescues for free. Okay, we've got a two, three, four. Two, not too bad at all. Three, though I don't love, close to a spill out and a pelican getting contaminated. And four up here, also not too dangerous, although we don't really have any characters in this whole like kind of section of the board. That might be a problem later. And let's see, here's our friendly marine vet. I'd love to get him in rescuing some of these people, especially right here. Let's see, you can go one free rescue of a pelican. That means we only need a octopus for our set. So he's got three actions left. Uh, two, I guess three, push this back. And for the fourth one, we already have each of these. So let's just get the guy who's in more danger, this seahorse. And remember, we need two full sets with our current victory conditions. Getting extra animals beyond that will just keep them out of danger, keep you from losing with the sick bay, but not really necessary for victory. All right, next up is going to be the environmental tech who can push oil for free. Let's see what she rolls. And there are four blue weather dice hiding somewhere in the bag, but you wouldn't know that from me playing so far. Okay, there's a three here, a three here, and a six. Where do I move it? There it is. Oof, six is also pretty dangerous. Almost a spill out, almost that dolphin contaminated. Oh, and this is terrible. So we are increasing our spill out track, and this uh, friendly pelican is now contaminated. And then down here, nothing to worry about yet. So our spill out track does increase by one. You'll note that we're still pretty far from the four, though, on our challenge difficulty rating, so that's okay. And green's actually pretty close to here, can push back oil for free. So I guess one, two actions to move. That's a free push and then maybe push again and again, because the really bad thing you don't want to happen is leave uh, like two dice there, because if you roll there again, it counts as another spill out moves the track again. So I like to rescue it as much as possible. And our friendly risk engineer, much nicer to roll two dice. Got one and a four. Look at that being so accommodating. Oh, no, our little octopus guy that we left. There we go. Now, he is right here, but the hazmat specialist is next. What are the chances we'll roll that again? Pretty low, right? So I think I'm going to have the risk engineer spend his first two actions to get this turtle. And that's great for two reasons. It gets us closer to our second row. And also, remember, we need to save three contaminated marine animals. So that's one out of three. And yeah, I could go over there, but yellow will literally go in a second. And then purple's over here, too. I need to get out of this area. Well, for now, we could use another dolphin, I guess. So I'll go ahead and do that. Oh, wait, uh, octopuses, octopuses. Let's have him go here for his third action and get an octopus for his fourth, which does get us our first resource cube. And I have to pick where I'm going to put it immediately. And I mean, multitask is just so good. I'll have it hang out. But I'm not going to have the risk engineer use it. I'd love to save it for the hazmat specialist to let him clear oil at his reduced cost again. Speaking of it, is his turn. Where are the weather dice? I don't know. Now we had a die jump out of the board. Okay, I don't even know if that really fell. Whatever. <laughs> A six, that's a little worrisome. Five, that was a five. There we go. And six over here, darn. All right, and it is Yellow's turn. He's not really in any of the danger zones. Uh, but let's go ahead and use two actions first to remove this oil entirely. And I think another two actions is save this contaminated octopus while we're here. 
That means he's out of actions for now. I could use the multitask, but seems like it makes more sense while nothing is near him to just let his turn end. And yes, to show you how terrible my positioning is, look at how focused we all are. If something happens on the other side of the board, we are in a bad way. But uh, the Marine Vet is up. Three dice coming. It is tough to film around a big, tall tower. We got a six here and a two and a four up there. Which are, geez, nearly the worst numbers we could have rolled. We got a lot of pairs up there. Oh, and this is absolutely terrible. We've got a contaminated dolphin and another spill out. Which means there we are, still in the three range, but who knows for how long. Now, lucky for us, again, it is Purple's turn, so they can get right over there. So let's see, that would be one, two already, leaving them with two actions, although they can do a free rescue or to spend one to rescue the dolphin. And that would be our third contaminated animal, so we should probably do that. So that'd be a third action to do that. And we now have three contaminated animals rescued, so we're good on our first win condition. We can mark that with a cube. We only need to rescue a Stingray and a Pelican to get our save at two full sets of marine life. We have so many oil dice left to remove, and it's so expensive to do it. Now, he's got one action left, but we got that cube on multitask. Let's make it three actions. Bam, bam, bam. Get out of here, dice. And now for the environmental tech. Hey, we finally got a blue die. Let's explain in a bit more detail what it does. So we're going to roll it just like the oil dice, but instead of it getting actually placed on the board, it's just going to activate one of the six weather effects, which are detailed here. As I mentioned, six is the only positive one. We all get plus one action point on our next turn. But whichever result gets rolled, we're going to mark it on the space of each of the player boards. And then at the end of each specialist turn, the cube will go away to show that it's no longer affecting them. So basically the weather will last for a full set of turns for each specialist. All right, it's a slim hope, but let's hope for that magical six. No such luck. We got a three and a five. So the five over here is not the worst, not the best. The three over here is safe for the moment. And the four effect is plus one AP to rescue animals, which honestly is not really the worst result I could have gotten. I've already rescued so many animals. I think we can focus on oil for a while without too much trouble. And this die is removed from the game. It doesn't go back into the bag. So you will have at most four weather events in the entire game. And with that, we're up to our environmental tech with her free oil push. And here she is. She's starting to get up into some nasty areas. Let's see. Let's have her go one here. And even though she gets a free oil push per turn, I'm actually going to remove this for two, three, four, her last three action points. Because as I've mentioned, that's the victory condition we're furthest from. And it's going to get us a cube. And I mean, it's hard to argue with using multitask again. Let's get her up to two more actions because that'll get her right here. She's got her free push. And for her second bonus action, let's just push again. And good. Finally, we have one person sort of in the part of the board that needs it. All right. The risk engineers turn two black dice. Oh, and they're both going down there. Six and four which I'm actually pretty okay with because even though those are doubled up and we're close to spill out, at least uh, two or even three of my characters, purple's pretty close, uh, are near there and can hopefully take care of it. In fact, Risk Engineer's up right now. Let's spend three to get rid of one of these entirely. What are the two animals I need? A Stingray and a Pelican. Ooh, they're both close to him. So let's see, for his fourth action, well, I could go over here and get a bonus action by dropping an extra oil next turn. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I don't really want the spill out to increase for sure. Let's go here and take a bonus action to push this, which again means we take a random die from the bag and we're going to have to drop that extra. So on yellow's turn, the hazmat specialist, we're going to drop four oil instead of three. Whoops. And speaking of that fun, oh, okay. And we got a three and a one up here. So seahorsey is not looking too good, although we don't have anybody in sick bay yet. So if we just have to lose a few animals, it's not the end of the world. And the six over here, not really a problem. Six over here. Wow, that track is entirely clear. So that's fine. Yellow's in kind of a weird spot off in the middle of nowhere where nothing is too troublesome. So I think for now I'm going to have him go here and pay two to remove this. And then, I don't know, go one more to where that pelican is. You can rescue him and remove another die next turn, maybe. All right, now it's Rescue Master the Marine Vet. And he's the last one who still has one of these cubes from the weather. But the nice thing is his plus one rescue cost doesn't apply. If I use his once per turn free rescue, it is still free, which is beautiful. Oh, I can't forget about this. Ah, Seahorse, we didn't rescue you, sorry. And with that sadness weighing heavy on our hearts, let's actually roll. Oh my gosh, double threes. That seems terrible. Remember how I said that six didn't matter? It might. Oh, and the double three is about to kill that pelican. Darn. All right, Marine Vet, what are you going to do? I think we got to keep on clearing oil. So let's spend uh, three out of four actions to get rid of this. And gets us another cube. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. We're going to go ahead and multitask. And for his one reigning action, we need a Stingray and a Pelican. Boom, a free rescue of a Stingray, which means when Yellow's turn comes back around, we can rescue that Pelican. We'll have another one of our victory conditions done. Awesome. But first, we got to survive and look how terrible the top looks where nobody is. Don't roll up there. Yes, I see a lot of dice not being up there. <laughs> no, because they're all concentrated. Look at this. Wow. 
And okay, it is Green's turn. She can push a die for free. So sure, let's have her clear this for three. Keep on working towards victory. Move here for one and clear that for her free action. That was three and a fourth action to move. And wow, this is going a lot smoother than my last game. Look, we only need two more dice cleared and a pelican and we win. We could do that in the next couple of turns, man. And a nice little gift from our risk engineer. Only two dice to roll. No, don't go north. Which number is it? Yep, three will definitely cause another spill out. The four is okay. So if this pelican is not feeling so great, and I think we're just going to have to leave him and our spill out increases. But wow, look at that. We are still one shy of rolling four dice a turn. That would have really messed us up if that had come earlier. All right, Red, what are you up to? Yes, you're definitely going to spend three to remove this entirely. Wait a second. Wait, can I just like rush the ending here? I've got one action left. And I've got a multitask for a second action, so I could go one, and then I could multitask and add a die to the extra action pull. Oh, interesting, a weather die. That'll get me three actions to remove another oil. Whoops, I got another cube. Oh, multitask, there you are. And what can two more actions do for me? Oh, yellow, you thought you were useful, but blink. And let's rescue that pelican. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve oil dice removed. One, two full sets of marine life. We have one, not too shabby at all. The MVP award definitely has to go to multitask. What a ridiculous card. <laughs> we'll talk about that a bit in my final thoughts. But that was the spill. I guess I should have played on ultimate. Would have been getting a four dice a turn for a little bit. That might have made things a bit more difficult, but I hope you enjoyed the play and hang on if you want to hear my thoughts on the game so far. So the spill, the spill, what am I thinking? First of all, it is fun to drop dice <laughs> into this tower. And I think they said they might have like stickers or something that goes on it. I'm not sure what it'll look like in its final form, but uh, definitely, especially for like my son and my family, the toy factor of this was really nice, has a fun table presence. And you know, it also has a nice randomizing factor because you really are gonna have a very different distribution of oil every time you play. So I think uh, this is fun and how it works overall. And the oil mechanic is cool too. I also think the game is incredibly quick to teach. The flow of a turn is very straightforward. Drop a few dice, take a few actions. There aren't that many to keep track of. They have nice guides on here, all the action types at the bottom of the player boards. The win and loss conditions are clear and straightforward. And the designer did say they might have some alternative win conditions that'll change up like what mix you need of these or even give you different things to strive for. So I think that'll be good for variety. And something I really, really like is the extra action pool. Might be my favorite mechanic of the game. It reminds me a bit of Flashpoint Fire Rescue, where you would have like four actions a turn, but you wouldn't have to use them all. You could save them for the next turn, except here it's a little different. You can literally just get extra actions and still have your full allotment in the next turn, but you have to make the next person's turn more dangerous in doing so. I really like that. I think it's a fun mechanic, especially if like you are just one action point shy of that key action that's going to save you from losing the game. I think it's a nice choice there. Now, what am I less excited about or have some concerns about? Well, first of all, this is just a very personal thing, but I don't like Pandemic, for example, and I don't love the spill for the same reason, in that while you have different characters in play, that's kind of the only variety in the game and like what stuff comes out when. And that's kind of exacerbated by the specialists because they only have five in the base game. Now, if they unlock a bunch in the Kickstarter, this could totally be better. But with only five and you have to use four, even if you're playing solo or two player, you have to use four, you're going to have almost every ability in every game. And the abilities aren't as interesting as I would like. Like I like this one where the cost of an action actually changes, but just doing a free action, like you'll often do both of these actions on your turn anyway. So it almost doesn't matter that much. So I wish there were more specialists. I wish their abilities were more interesting. Interesting. I feel like especially for solo and two player play where you're just kind of controlling all of them together, it's uh, not going to be as interesting. Although I will say the fact that you always use four specialists does mean the balance will be better across player counts. You won't have that weird thing where like with five players, the game is impossible. And with two players, it's super easy. They uh, kind of take care of that by keeping it consistent. Speaking of balance, I like the idea of completing things and getting resource cubes to put on these cards. But the fact that you can use the same card over and over again, I mean, I don't know if you all thought so in my playthrough, but I thought multitask was stupid powerful. <laughs> I would never have won as quickly as I would have if I had not gotten, gosh, over the course of the game, what did I get? Four from this and five, I never used that one. Five sets of two extra actions. That is 10 extra actions. That is almost an entire set of all my characters getting entire turns with no oil dropping. I found that incredibly powerful, which means that I didn't care to use these. Now I've talked to the designer a bit about this and he 
said, they're still balancing these. So all this might be fixed for the final version. But honestly, I would love to see like a mechanic where you couldn't put a cube on a card after you've used it until you use another card. Or like once you use a card twice, it just goes away. Something so that even if the balance is not perfect, you can't abuse the card that seems to be the best for your players. And one more balance thing, the fact that right now the only way to change the difficulty is with how many oil dice you're dropping is okay. But if you don't get early spillouts, it's not going to affect your game that much because you could stay in this three area for a pretty long time, even on ultimate difficulty. So I think it might be a good idea for them to look into changing up the win conditions as well to make the game easier or harder. That way you've got two levers to kind of mess with to fit your group if you're playing with your family versus more hardcore gamers. But there you go. That was the spill. Thanks for watching all of those bird's eye view dice drops. I hope that was entertaining and not terrible. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Check out the Kickstarter page. See what you think for yourself. And we will see you at the next stop.